Are you familiar with Jelly Bean Row in downtown St. John's? I get asked from time to time why the houses in the old part of St. John's are so colorful. Like, what is the origin of Jelly Bean Row? I don't know. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There's a lot of stories and ideas about where the sort of jelly bean row notion comes from, why people paint their houses in, in really bright colors. Some of the stories are probably rooted in truth. Some of them are probably just people trying to make sense of where this trend came from. And now it's, it's so common that, um, you know, we probably will never know where it actually originated from, but I think there's probably pieces of truth in all of the little theories that are out there. St. John's is a very, very, very foggy city. It's one of the foggiest, if not the foggiest, cities in the world. Some of the stories say that sailors decided to paint their houses in bright colors so that they could see the house when they came back in through the narrows into St. John's Harbor in the fog. St. John's is a, a hilly city, right? The oldest part of St. John's is built around the harbor and kind of sprouted up around the harbor on, on hills. So there's vistas coming, you know, from a boat coming in from the Atlantic Ocean into St. John's Harbor. You can see the city from your boat. On the other hand, many people that have been in St. John's for generations have never actually been on the water. Just because we're a harbor city doesn't mean that everybody's a fisherman. So some people that have their view of St. John's from the hill looking into the harbor aren't really concerned with what the vista is from the sailors coming into the harbor. Other theories highlight the probability that the sort of depressing weather can somehow be mitigated by brightly painting the landscape. If the sky is not blue and nature is not really contributing to a bright palette in the city, humans have the ability to alter their surroundings by painting their houses in pink and blue and purple. There was a concerted effort that began, I believe, in the 70s to revitalize downtown and there were some pushes to paint houses, the vast majority of which were wooden, so it's easy to spruce up with a lick of paint. Bright colors were encouraged. That's why I don't think there is like a single defined reason why there are brightly painted houses all over the oldest part of St. John's and, and many other parts of the city. And now you'll find the same trend happening all around the province in a lot of the smaller outport communities with really brightly colored stages or fishing sheds that you, you will see dotting the coastline. Now, as a child through the 80s and early 90s, I spent a lot of time at my granddad's house on Gower Street. He had one of those three-story row houses that are so common on Gower Street and in the downtown area. But his house was brown, and I don't remember any houses at that time standing out as particularly colorful. Back in the 80s and early 90s, I don't recall any standout colors. It's a relatively new phenomenon. It's really hard to kind of conceptualize downtown without these colors. Downtown in the area where like City Hall and Milwin Stadium and that area now is completely changed. But back in the, the 40s and, and 50s and then before that as well, this was the area that was known as the center city slums. This was a densely populated area of the city, but a lot of the houses were, were ramshackle, rickety old houses that had no paint whatsoever. Not only non bright color paints, just not a lick of paint at all. So Jelly Bean Row is what it is today and the reasons for why people decided to start painting the houses in, in bright colors, there's many reasons for that. And at the end of the day, this is the result and it's beautiful. And I'm happy to see the character of the city of St. John's highlighted in tourism ads, even if it is a little bit forced now. So wherever this trend started, whenever it started, I don't have a definitive answer and I don't believe anybody that says that they do, but I'm happy to take little pieces of all the different theories that are out there and sort of think about where did these candy colors originally start being painted and when and, and who decided to, to paint their house in a, a bright purple back in the day. I don't know. But I'm happy with the result. I think it's a cool, unique aspect of a cool, unique city that sure, it has its problems, but looking pretty on a postcard is not one of them. <laughs>